أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Last time we concluded verse 33 and today we will resume with verse 34 of Surah An-Naba. Allah says, وَكَأْسًا دِهَاقًا And a full cup. A ka's in Arabic was used in the old times to talk about a cup of wine. But in here, it's a cup that will have wine and everything else because there are different joys in paradise and it's just not it's not just wine allah mentions milk allah mentions wine allah mentions honey allah mentions sweet water so it will be filled with different things and it is full to the brim one doesn't need to exert an effort to fill it it's full for him and every time he drinks, he finds it full. It never gets empty. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, it never stops, meaning the types of drink will continue coming to him. And it will never stop being full. So it is always continuously full in the cup. So we're talking about continuity of the volume being full and Continuity of variety of drinks. So one has different joys alternating. So the joy is more. Because when there is a, uh, a certain or a limited type of joy, after a while one gets accustomed to it. So it doesn't become a joy as much. But when it's changing, it's alternating between different joys. Then you enjoy this and it's changing. Then you enjoy this and then it's changing. This is how we will, inshallah, be enjoying ourselves in paradise. Notice here the mention of wine was made before the mention of silk and gold. Wine, we're commanded to refrain from. We will enjoy wine in Jannah with the difference that we will enjoy a distinct taste of wine without the evil consequence like people get when they drink it in life. When people get drunk drinking wine or any intoxicant, they get a hangover, they get a headache, they throw up, they can't concentrate, they're unfocused, they don't know what they're talking about, they can't control themselves. Well, in paradise, none of that is going to happen. The only thing you do or the only thing you get as a result of drinking wine is the joy of a sweet of a pleasant, of an unexpected joy out of drinking this wine. Allah says in verse 35, <laughs> No ill or useless speech will they hear therein or any falsehood or lying. See, this is again a reward in return for what they have done. In dunya, and remember the, the disbelievers were belying the Prophet ﷺ, were mocking the Prophet ﷺ, were bad-mouthing the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. And they endured this patiently. They persevered through this for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And they held on strong to their faith, despite the torture, despite the harm, the psychological harm, 
by having to hear this and persevere, and the physical, the famous stories of the torture, the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, went through and persevered through. So they have persevered through this, so they will not have to suffer the pain of listening or hearing any useless speech or belying or falsehood in paradise. See, the beginning of the chapter, Allah Azza wa Jal was talking about this useless talk that went on between the disbelievers of Quraysh. Amma yatasa'aloon. What is Muhammad coming with? What is this Quran? What is this Sharia? What is this resurrection? They're denying resurrection. They're denying the hereafter. This was all useless idle talk. Ill speeches. They won't have to hear any of that. And another reason is that a believer, when he protects his ears from listening to what displeases Allah Azza wa Jal, in return he is rewarded that he will not hear anything that displeases him or harms him the least in paradise. Notice the verses before that, Allah addressed some of the tangible aspects or pleasures of paradise. And in this one, Allah is addressing the psychological or intangible aspect of paradise. The emotional disturbance or the emotional harm that they will be protected against in paradise. So what would they hear? They will only hear good things. An example was said to us by Allah Azza wa Jal. In verse 25 and verse 26 of chapter Al-Waqi'ah, Allah says, لَا يَسْمَعُونَ فِيهَا لَغْوًا وَلَا تَأْثِيمًا إِلَّا قِيلًا سَلَامًا سَلَامًا They will not hear therein ill speech or commission of sin, only a saying, peace, peace. That's the only thing they will hear. But who is addressing them with this? Who is saying this? Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in a different chapter, chapter Ar-Ra'd, verses 23 and 24. Allah says, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِم مِّن كُلِّ بَابٍ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Which means, and the angels will enter upon them from every gate, saying, Peace, i.e., security. Peace be upon you for what you patiently endured. See, the reward for their perseverance is to hear. The angels greeting them and supplicating Allah for them. Even they themselves will not hear from one another but pleasant things. The Prophet ﷺ, and this is reported by Imam Muslim and narrated by Jabir radiallahu anhu. He said alayhi salatu was salam about the people of paradise. They will be inspired to declare the freedom of Allah from any imperfection and proclaim his greatness as easily as they breathe. So what they will do, or rather, what they will be saying are praises of Allah, glorification of Allah. So again, they will not hear anything that will harm them, disturb them. And when they hear something, it is always pleasant, whether from the angels or from one another. The following verse, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Jaza'an min rabbika ata'an hisaba A reward from your Lord a generous gift may do by account. So, 
they will attain this, these pleasures, this eternal bliss, as a result of their righteousness, the effort they exerted in dunya, the perseverance, the endurance, the adherence to Allah's commandments. But that's not the main reason. Allah says, Jaza'am min rabbik, a gift. This, O oh believers, that you will enjoy once admitted into paradise is a gift. Is a pure gift. A generous gift from your Lord. It's a gift rewarding your effort. When one deprives himself for the sake of Allah, as the Prophet ﷺ told us, when you deprive yourself from something, when you give something up for the sake of Allah, Allah in return will recompense you will give you back in return, will reward you with something better. And what better can be after paradise? What better a gift can be than being rescued from hell and being admitted into paradise? Allah Azza wa Jal Describe some of the bliss and joy people will enjoy in paradise. But then to make people long for this paradise, he gave examples with things they can relate to. Women, rivers, fruits, birds, trees, so on and so forth. But then there is an excitement there. That excitement is to tell them that there is more, but you're not going to be told what it is. But it's much better than what you already heard and what you already know. Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim, may Allah have mercy upon them, reported, as narrated by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah the Exalted said, I have prepared for my righteous slaves what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no heart of no man, and the mind of no man has conceived. Then he وسلم, said, If you wish, recite. And then he recited verse 17 of Surah al sajda فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ No person knows what is kept hitting for them of joy as a reward for what they used to do. This verse, or this narration rather, adds to the excitement in the heart of a believer. Makes him strive harder and harder and more and more to attain that eternal bliss where he will get things that are better than what he heard, yet are not defined. The only definition given is that will be much better, much more joyful and enjoyable for you. Allah concludes this set of verses describing the bliss and the joy of the people of paradise in verse 37. Allah says, رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا 
from the Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them, the most merciful. They possess not from him authority for speech. No creature on the day of judgment, whether man, whether jinn, whether angels, will have the authority to speak unless Allah Azza wa Jal gives them permission to do so. So the disbelievers will not even have a chance to argue and debate, to try to justify. But Allah Azza wa Jal, which is very beautiful in this verse, Allah used one of His names and attributes, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, excessive and massive mercy, which only Allah Azza wa Jal possesses and offers. This, with regards to the believers, is to reflect His excessive and massive mercy upon them and to remind them that He helped them through their lives to remain upon the right path, to maintain themselves steadfast upon the religion of Allah. And also, in the hereafter, He will grant them this generous gift of the admittance into paradise. And with regards to the disbelievers who denied and belied and rejected the message not to give hope. It is as if to say you denied, you rejected, you belied, yet I am the most merciful. So, if you stop before that, if you refrain, if you adhere, if you join the caravan of the believers, if you embrace Islam and fulfill my commandments, I will forgive and pardon. And you will be addressed with these verses as opposed to the previous ones. But this has to happen before it's too late, before death. And in this is also a reminder to the believers that we still have a chance before death approaches unexpectedly because it doesn't take permission. It doesn't call upon you. It doesn't send us messages that I'm coming. It comes suddenly. So there's a message in it to us that the chance is there as long as you're alive. So, it is time right at this second to pledge to Allah Azza wa Jal repentance from all shortcomings and sins, and we all know ourselves. It is time to pledge to Allah Azza wa Jal that we will repent sincerely and start a new life. Flip the page and start a new page. A life of adherence to the commandments of Allah. Perhaps we will become worthy and deserving of the gift from Allah Azza wa Jal, the generous gift from Allah Azza wa Jal, which He prepared to the pious. With this we will conclude and we will resume in the next session, insha'Allah. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi.